Hello everyone, welcome to my tips and tricks video um, and showing interest in my alignment tool. So when you receive the tool, it's going to arrive in a sealed plastic straw. This is done to protect the pokey ends from stabbing through the envelope I mailed them in. Um, so I'm going to open this one up here. It's basically right off the shelf. One that I was planning to mail out, but I'm going to use it here for this demonstration. So here's the tool. You can see, hang on, here's the tool. Brand new, never been used. You can see here's the the tip. It's pretty pokey. Um, it's not extremely pokey because I, I don't want anyone stabbing themselves or hurting themselves. Um, I have here a lead pencil and .07 and you can see that you know it's it's smaller than than that but not by much. So it is pretty pokey but you know you can poke yourself and not bleed. Um, so another thing you'll notice is the tool has two two different ends. A tool on each end has a big side and a small side. And so what I've discovered is Benchmade primarily uses two different pin sizes. Now whenever they introduce a knife they usually introduce a big one and a small one. So here's my 710 which I've carried for I don't know going on a decade now and um, it was the first axis knife introduced by Benchmade and later on they came out with its smaller brother the 705 I believe this one is and it has a smaller pin than its bigger brother so usually the big version of the knife has the big version of the pin and the smaller version of the knife has a smaller version of the pin and this is pretty much true until today um, here you can see my griptilian and the big the big version of the griptilian or actually the normal version of the griptilian has the bigger size pin and the mini grip has the smaller size pin and this tool works on both sizes because Benchmade has been very consistent over the past couple of decades on using the same two size of pins. So ever since the late 90s all the way until today and even my mini bug out here the it uses the smaller size pin and it works perfectly this one this one and this one. So over the course of a couple of decades Benchmade has remained consistent to their pin sizes. So I'm very certain that this tool will cover all of Benchmade's access lock knives. So with that said, um, we're going to get into the demonstration of tips and tricks here. Uh, for this demonstration, we'll be taking apart my Griptilian. Now, whenever you take apart a knife, what I suggest you do is you unscrew maybe one or two turns, and then with the screwdriver still on the screw head and the screw head or the screw still embedded in the screw I would push that way because sometimes crud builds up and it gets a little bit stuck or sticky and hard to to do or in the case of my 710 here which has spent many many years in my pocket um, the blade has actually worn a groove into the pin itself so if you have a very well used knife, um, you would be better served to unscrew it a few turns and then push it with the stuff, with the screwdriver. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not even, oh, it's finally broke free, but um, it may have to overcome some stickage. So it's better to push with the screwdriver because it's better for the pin itself too. So I'm gonna unscrew here push a little bit more and then finally just unscrew all the way out. So once the screw is all the way out, um, if you're good enough, you could just dig your nails in here and pull out the pin. But I'm going to show it's, it's just as easy that once you've got it loosened, the, another way to do it is to take the alignment tool and Put it inside the pin and push it through. Now you'll notice 
I know for a fact that this is the bigger version of the knife and has the bigger pin. If this is your first time taking apart the knife and you're not familiar as to what size of pin it may have, you can always stick the smaller one in and you can see in here that it, it, it flops around and you can always attempt to put the bigger one in and if it slides in and you can feel it not get stuck immediately then you know it can handle the bigger size pin and here I'll show you. So we'll take apart the smaller pin or at least just take out the screw and you'll see. So I know for a fact this one's the smaller pin because it's the smaller version of the knife and I'll take the big the big side of the tool so here's the small side we'll take the big side and you see it goes in but it doesn't slide in I don't know if you can see that very well yeah you can see it doesn't slide in to the pin itself but here I'll show you the small one will slide in very easily so it goes all the way in so with that said we'll take the big side of the tool stick it in the pin and if you look inside the hole here you can see this flat part right there, right? That is the detent or the alignment or the D shape that everyone talks about. Basically, you're gonna wanna line up the flat here with that because the rest of it is round. So I'm gonna put it like this and it's in. Now I could just force it through, but that's a little bit unnecessary. The best thing to do would be to relieve the tension that's on the pin by pulling back on the lock bar. So once you do that, it easily slides through, no problem. You can remove the pin and you can see here on the pin, it's rounded just like my alignment tool, it's rounded and it has the flat part. Hang on, I'll grab a extra tool here and you can see that it's made almost precisely the same dimensions. It's actually just like a human hair thinner so that way it's easy to slide in. Otherwise, it would be just as difficult as sliding the pin in. But you can see the milled edge or the milled flat is the same as the flat on the pivot pin used by Benchmade. So once you do that, once you get it through, you can see I can handle the knife fairly confidently with one hand it won't fall apart it's all together um, when I do want to go to take it apart all I got to do is relieve the pressure by pulling back on the lock pin slide the tool out and then I can remove the blade um, the washers are still in here so I'll go and remove the washers now there's the washers or bushings how, whatever you would want to call them so that's it the knife's disassembled fairly easy now when it comes back to reassembling the knife, um, it's just the reverse of that. Usually like you've seen on other videos and probably have experienced yourself, it's, it's just requires five hands and you only have two. And you have to hold everything together like this. And what I usually do is instead of holding it perfectly aligned like this, and hoping that everything slides in perfectly. And some people will use lubricant to hold everything in place, and that's fine too, but you know, sometimes that can be too much lubricant. What I usually end up doing is I'll push the bushings or the washers a little bit forward of the hole, so that way when I slide it in, hopefully everything aligns so that way this or the bushings are at least partially aligned with the hole by the time I get it in. So I'll demonstrate that now. Here I'll hold them out by the blade and you can see right here, they're past the blade. I'll slide them in between the two, there you go, between the two scales. And you can watch through here. And of course, they're not gonna align very well, but that's fine. So I don't know if you can see inside there, but you can see inside and we can see through the washer and we can see through the hole on the blade. I'm going to flip it over real quick. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to start it by sticking the tool in. And you can use the big side or the small side. It doesn't matter for this right now. But I'm going to use the tool to pull over 
the, the bushing. There you go. And now you can see on the other side that that bushing is not yet aligned or even shows any light through there. So I can see through here that it kind of is aligned. So I'm going to stick the tool in and pry it over a little bit. And oh, so I saw wrong. The bushing is too far, which is fine. Just push it back and push the blade back. Push with the tool. And there we go. Now you can see through. And as long as you have a little bit of daylight coming through, you can you can get the tool through and the tool will align everything perfectly. So with that said, I'm going to demonstrate that now. I can see light through there. All I got to do is stick the tool in and I'm going to use the big side because it's the big, bigger pin version. And I'm going to line the flat of the tool with the flat on the knife. Just stick it in and there you go. I got the tip all the way through, which means it's made it through both bushings and the blade hole. Now, once it's like this, all I have to do is relax. Keep a little pressure on there to make sure it doesn't fall out. Keep Just keep the tool from falling out. And all you have to do is relieve the pressure of the lock bar and it would just slide in place, just like that. And now, like I was earlier, I can set the knife down, do what else I need to do. If I forgot to do something or if I want to lubricate the pin, I can do that at this time. Um, there's no stress. There's no rush. We know that everything is aligned. And as soon as I'm ready to put it together, it'll go off without a hitch. I'm going to demonstrate that now. So, like I said earlier, just align the flat with the flat on the tool. And to... Sorry, to slide it through, all I'm going to do is pull back on the lock bar to relieve the pressure and it slides right in. Now, one of the tricks about this is sometimes whenever you're pushing through and you might not see it, it'll be like even at a microscopic level, the pin might just slide slightly off cant from the flat. So here I'll demonstrate like this. Um, if you're just not paying attention or even if you you know just you just can't see because it's just so small see now the pin won't go through all you have to do is just rock the tool or rotate your hand back and forth and it will self seat it'll find itself because the tool is made in such a way that it will keep everything aligned until the pin slides in so all you got to do is just just pivot with your thumb or pivot with whatever finger you're using using to push and just relieve the tension by pulling back on the lock bar, sliding it in. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna put it off center or off cant on purpose just to demonstrate. Now this is this is very far, it's gonna require a lot of movement on my hand, but you'll see. All you gotta do, relieve the tension, push it in, rotate your hand until it finds the seat, and then right in. So just rotate until it finds it, slides right in. And of course, the tension of the lock bar is going to hold everything in place while the pin is in there. Then you just take the screw and screw it in. And there you go. And that's it. That's all that's required. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other tips I can give at this time. But I'm going to put this knife back together. And I'm going to demonstrate it on the smaller knife at this time too. So there you go. Tighten. Loosen a little bit. Yep, good enough for now. So we'll pull out the smaller griptilian, the mini grip. Look for the flat. And if you can't see the flat because it's so small, I'm pretty sure it's at the top here, but I can't tell right now. So all you got to do is even if you have it wrong, you just pull back and just rotate the tool until it finds it too. So as you can see there, I, I had it on the upside at first and had to rotate the tool. So um, I know that's too big. That's the big side. It's not going in. It's not sliding into the pin. So I'll know to flip it to the small side. There we go. 
I'm purposely moving the flat part to the top to demonstrate that it's not going to slide in easily. Pull back on the lock bar, push it in. It won't go through because this flat is not aligned with the flat on the scales. All you got to do is just gently rotate and keep slight pressure on there until it finds it. And I went too far because I'm not putting enough pressure on. Just try a little bit more pressure. And there you go. It found it. Push it straight through. And of course, since the tool is in there, it's acting like the pin itself. The knife is still all together. If I just want to do something with this or change it out or oil it, I can do that. Slide it right back in. No problem. Like that. Um, again, we'll take this one apart. Full tear down. There we go. And like I said earlier is what I do is I'll take the two bronze bushings, stick them out past, slide it into the scales, try to maintain contact with everything. And of course, we slide through here and I can see that I can see through the bronze washer on this side and the blade hole, but on this side, the bronze washer hasn't made it all the way through. Now, unfortunately, it's so thin in there that my tool won't push that in. You're still gonna need something thin or small. I suggest something like a needle, or in my case, this is a, a needle-like dental pick. I can just sit there and push it in. And sometimes if, oh, I guess that got it aligned. So that, that made it all the way through. So now we can see that C light all the way through. So we know at this point, even if they weren't perfectly aligned, just slide the tool in and it'll line everything up. It'll automatically align everything up and then keep everything aligned until you're ready to assemble. So with that being said, um, another thing to think about or address at this point is which side you want the pin to be on. One side will be the pin side, the other side will be the screw side. And some people prefer it to be how the factory wants or how the factory had it, that's fine. I usually do it how it's more comfortable for me to manipulate or reassemble. And with that being said, is I like to push the pin with my thumb. And I know I'm gonna hold the knife like this and relieve the tension with my right hand and I'll be pushing with my left thumb. So what I want to do is to come in from the opposite side with the alignment tool so that way when I put the pin on top of it, I can push with my thumb out. Now if you wanna do this with your right hand, the opposite way of what I'm showing here, that's fine too. All you would do is you'd come in from the other side and just come in and push. I don't know, even if you wanna shove the pin through with your pointer finger instead of your thumb, you can do that. Just adjust the, which, whichever side you're coming in the knife from. So with that said, I'm gonna come in how I originally said from this side. And as you can see, it's stopped here because it, the flat is not aligned or actually I think it is aligned. So if not, I can pull it out, rotate it 180 degrees, keep a little bit of pressure and I can feel it click in. So here you can see that again and click. You can actually hear it click as it lines up. So what's happening is the tapers here are pushing up against the blade, but the blade can't be pushed out of the way because the tension of the lock bar is keeping the blade misaligned, which is one of the causes of making, or one of the root reasons why this reassembly is so difficult. So all I gotta do, pull back on this lock bar and you'll see the tool slides right through with a little bit of pressure. Easy as that, like I did earlier. Put the pin on and line up the flats fairly closely relieve the pressure of the lock bar and just slide it through and rotate with my thumb. Here, I'll demonstrate that 
with everything in view. So line up the flat and you can see it's, it's not the easiest to keep the flat aligned, but that's fine. Relieve the pressure, slide it through. That one went off without a hitch. And of course, put the screw back in and tighten to your preference. If you prefer something like a Chris Reeves, you can, or if you like drop shut or even slightly loose so it comes out and flips out easier, that's all up to you on however you tighten the screw. And I can't give you any advice on that other than adjust the tension. Um, with that, that's the conclusion of this tips and trick. I want to thank you for showing interest in my tool, which I make right here in my shop. Um, if you want to stick around, we can discuss a few more things such as um, I make these here in my shop. So if you guys want, contact me, message me on either Etsy or eBay and just if you want something specific, if you want maybe one of these tools, maybe you want two of these tools with a small end and a big end with maybe a wooden handle or something, you know, we can work something out if you want. I've been trying to make these in stainless steel and here's a stainless steel one, which I think I'm going to start offering up pretty soon. These are pretty nice. Um, you know, we can figure that out. I've even toyed around with adding a little bit of shrink wrap to the tool itself. And if you want, maybe contact me, let me know. We can work something out. I don't know if that's gonna be a big demand thing or whatever, but I'm just a guy playing around in my shop and I appreciate all the interest anyone shows in my creation and I'm willing to work with everyone. So yeah, by all means, contact me and if you have an idea or a request, maybe I can accommodate it. Um, that's it for now. Thank you for your interest.